Good afternoon. My name is James Millington, Director of Product Marketing here at VMware. Thanks very much for joining us for this webinar, Securing Office 365 with VMware Workspace ONE Conditional Access. I'm joined today by my colleague, Camilla Latiro, Senior Technical Marketing Manager, also from VMware. Now, we've got a lot of stuff that we are going to try and cover today. So I'm going to try and move straight into the, the content. So VMware Workspace ONE is a digital workspace platform that enables your users to simply and securely access applications and resources from any device and any location. Workspace ONE delivers a consistent consumer-like experience while providing IT with the tools it needs to be able to manage a range of devices across different ownership models and geographies with enterprise-level security. To achieve this, Workspace ONE combines user environment management and identity, which enables it to deliver intelligent access across multiple aspects of devices, users, applications, content, networks, and locations. As environments become increasingly heterogeneous across requirements to support an increasing diversity of di devices and application types, there are five key elements to the success of enabling the flexible style of user access that many organizations are now finding can be a competitive advantage when attracting and retaining the best talent. There's the user experience. We're increasingly seeing projects driven by HR departments, recognizing that if you want to attract the best talent, you need to offer a consumer-like experience in how they work as well as play. All applications, consumers may be in a, an all app type environment, but the reality is most organizations aren't. So you need to find a way to deliver legacy and modern apps with a consistent user experience. Modern management, so finally we get to something for IT. IT have to have the tools to manage all devices, just like a mobile device, so over the cloud and in real time, so users can get to work quickly without disruption. And insights, you need to aggregate tremendous amounts of data now to have visibility and correlation from the users to the app and from devices to the network, so you can find out exactly where any potential problems or issues exist. And automation, so let's get IT away from the, the flip up screen in the data center, so let's leverage machine learning and automation so that IT can work on innovation and not maintenance. Undertaking a, a digital workspace journey can be quite daunting. So having a defined starting point and a goal is a necessity. One of those starting points that we see in many organizations is Office 365. 0365 is in many organizations a first en masse move to a SaaS application for all of their users that truly benefits the most by embracing the full range of options, including working from any device in any location. And the way that you secure this access is a critical aspect to the story. So I'm going to hand over now to Camillo, who's going to take you through a number of scenarios that I hope will be familiar and will be valuable as you plan your journey. So Camillo, over to you. So thank you, James. Appreciate it. Yep. So as James mentioned, we are going to um, go over through a number of scenarios during this presentation. Uh, before we do that, uh, there are a couple of different security principles that we'll need to look at. So the security principles are really what we look at when it comes to building a sound strategy to securing your mobile devices, when it comes to accessing resources in Office 365. Then we'll apply those security principles to take a look at a couple of different scenarios that we've seen on a day-to-day -day basis uh, when dealing with customers that are making the transition over to Office 365. Uh, so different type of devices, uh, different type of ownerships and trying to access different type of resources um, within this cloud service. And then we just reiterate what we learned throughout the, this presentation. So let's head on and get started with with the presentation itself. So the first thing we'll, we'll take a look at, right, is so what, what does it mean to access a resource in Office 365, right? With most SaaS applications or most devices that are accessing SaaS applications, it really just means to get in a glance of the information that is being stored mainly in SaaS. 
well, when it comes to Office 365, users are really interacting with the data itself by downloading it locally and keeping a local copy to their mobile devices. This makes it a much more um, concerning scenario for our security teams where they want to make sure that all the information that's being handled from a corporate standpoint remains within the realm uh, that's secure by the secure security policies that are being applied by IT administrators. Right, so, we'll, so we need to make sure that any information that's downloaded to mobile devices are being kept with an audit level that can be retraced by any IT administrator. Uh, so this means any information that's being accessed from all of the Office native applications, be it the Outlook Gmail client or any other um, application that syncs to the online OneDrive or SharePoint repositories. Um, and now, and, and finally, we would say that any any access that is given through mobile devices, uh, through Office 365 resources, again, be it email or OneDrive resources, needs to have strong um, IT governance, so strong policies to define and reiterate how, how that information is being kept within the uh, IT um, realm of information. So for this presentation, we'll be making a couple of different assumptions, right? As we mentioned, we'll be dealing only with Microsoft native applications. Uh, so Microsoft OneDrive, Microsoft Outlook, and some of the native clients that are available for the different um, desktop clients, such uh, for, for Windows 10 as well. Uh, all of the uh, different endpoints that will be related, that we'll be discussing and secure and discussing with, with regards to securing will be related to Office 365 applications as well. And with regards to the policies that we'll be creating, um, it is important to take note that the this are, are best best practices that we um, take it in order to minimize the risk when it comes to accident, accidentally leaking data as an end user within the company. And it's important to know that there's no way to 100% secure information that's being downloaded to a mobile device. Um, it is only best practices to mitigate as much as possible any accidental leakage of that information itself. So there are three main security principles that, it, that we need to take a look at when it comes to securing an, an user or the mo that's accessing Office 365 resources through a mobile device. The first thing we need to do is to take control of the device itself uh, in order to understand what type of device is being accessed and what type of, uh, and what state the device is currently in. Does it meet with all, all the different security policies that need to be mandated by the IT administrator? Uh, does it have any, any malware installed on it? Does it have a correct password? before it's able to download and store any data locally. And we also need to understand what type of application is accessing those resources, right? So applications can have local policies that are outside of the realm of, of the general device itself. Uh, so whether the type of client that's being accessed, whether it's a local client, web client, and whether those that application itself is enforcing all the necessary policies that are required to protect the data. And finally, we also need to understand which user is actually um, logging in to access those resources. Right? And so does the user itself says is who he, who he says it is, and does the user actually or should have access to those resources that are being accessed or requested to be accessed at that point. So the first thing we'll, we'll take a look at is a demonstration of the video that takes us to a, a vanilla device, a device that has not implemented any of the different security principles that we just explored. So as you can see in this case, we have a device that has no sort of MDM regulations. Um, and it's a device, a BOID device that any, any customer or any end user can bring to the company and try to, try to access their, their email resources. So as you can see, I can log into my Outlook application, download my email, and then take a look at one of the attachments that's being sent from one of my uh, corporate email domain. So this attachment contains financial information that should be kept within the company, but because this device has no restrictions, and there's no restrictions between within the Office 365 tenant, uh, then I can easily download the attachment and then forward that over to a personal email account. So that really falls outside of the, the realm of, of any protection or any audit trail that's being kept within within the company itself. So any, any transformation or any sharing that uh, can be done with from the doc, com, from that document from that point forward uh, cannot be traced back. Um, again, it's not it's not only forwarding through email, but can also go ahead and copy paste any information from that specific document itself 
and they just copied it over to a personal account or to an application that's not deemed managed or deemed appropriate to be used within um, for corporate information. So this is where we introduce device management controls. Right? So device management sort of allows us to take care of a couple different things. So we can separate work and personal applications. And that's very important in, in today's day and age. So we want to make sure we take control of the information only that relates to work applications. Um, personal, personal privacy today and age is, is very important for end users that are working for, uh, for the companies. They want to make sure that they're, even though they are utilizing these devices to access corporate information, uh, these devices are still being used for personal matters, which includes personal text messages, photos, and uh, and information that should not be shared with, with the within the corporate environment. So MDM allows us to make the distinction to apply policies that only apply to MDM managed applications and, and maintain all of the personal information um, aside. We also want to prevent information or data leak between the, the two different types of applications. So prevent copying and pasting or forwarding or even and storing data um, that is being downloaded from a corporate application onto a personal application. So the example that we saw earlier from downloading the uh, corporate attachment and share, um, saving that over to the personal Evernote account, that is something that can be enforced and blocked out with built-in um, MDM um, policies. And finally, again, we want to make sure we, we use the um, MDM management policies to secure to secure the uh, all of the applications and make sure that we can we can flow make flow of, of data available between the MDM managed applications. So this does is thus allow collaboration between the different applications itself while, while blocking information going over to any of the personal applications. So next up, uh, we'll take a look at uh, the same device that we took. Uh, that we saw earlier, uh, but we'll now take a look at an example of what it means when we add MDM controls to the same device. So as we can see, now that we've enrolled a device within Workspace ONE, uh, we can access our Workspace ONE catalog, which would give us an indication of all the applications, corporate applications that are available for us as a corporate user. Uh, as we can see, we have all of the native um, Office 365 applications that are available for our iOS device. And if we set out, look over to the settings, uh, we can see that we now have um, a Workspace ONE device management profile. So device management profile does a couple different things. It allows us to enforce all the different um, DLP policies. It allows us to control flow of data within the device, but it also allows us to download credentials that, that would allow the end user and the device to authenticate to the different Office 365 endpoints securely. So similar to before, we'll go ahead and activate one, one of the Office 365 native applications. Um, from there, we can access the same confidential uh, financial for forecast training that there was accessed before. So in this case, we can view and, and, and modify the, the same document within the same application. But now when it comes to sharing the document to applications, we can see that we only have access to share the document to MDM applications. So in this case, we've only deemed Office 365 native applications uh, to be managed within the corporate realm. So Evernote or PDF Reader is no longer available as an option to view those documents. Now, the important thing to note is that even though we are able to, um, to block access to, to external applications, there are still ways for end users to share documents within the application itself to an account that may not be a part of their, of their corporate realm. So in this case, we're signing into a personal OneDrive account that has uh, no policies no, and, and no audit trail that would relate to the, uh, the comp corporate account. But even though that because this application is, sharing, is doing the sharing within the application itself and not through the device, you now we can still actually do a copy paste or, or transition of data from the, from the corporate account to a personal account uh, without interfering with the current uh, MDM policies that are already in place. So, so, you, so you can see in this case, we can still do a copy paste of information. We can, we can still copy over any nodes into our personal, personal Evernote account. Um, so any, anything that doesn't relate to copying the entire document, 
uh, with anything that would deem just taking a screenshot, uh, doing a copy paste of a specific um, parts of the document itself, those options will still be available from the user, even if the device is fully managed. Um, so this is where the se second security principle comes into play, as there are always st other strategies that need to be taken into account in order to fully uh, secure the device. So as mentioned, this is where application management controls comes into play. Right? So even if we have the device fully MDM managed, there are specific uh, restrictions within the Office 365 applications that need to be applied. So MDM, MDM regulations don't really have oversee any, any controls that happen within the application itself. So as we saw, transferring the information from a corporate uh, OneDrive account to a personal OneDrive account is not really uh, restricted from, from MDM restrictions. Uh, so that it is something that, that needs to be controlled through app-specific app controls. So in this case, um, there are there are MARM controls that are controlled through within the Office 365 SDK itself that can be applied through the Workspace ONE uh, console as well. So Workspace ONE has a completed integration with Azure Graph APIs. And Azure Graph APIs allows us to automatically create um, MAM controls for the Office 365 applications. It allows us to enforce and, and restrict, copy-paste, and, and transmission of, of information between corporate and personal accounts. Um, so even though these are policies that are being ensured through the Azure Cloud, they are still being automatically controlled within the Workspace ONE application. So the creation of, of the policies itself, as well as the assignment to the users that those policies are being uh, assigned, uh, created for, uh, will be done through the Workspace ONE uh, console. So next video we'll take a look at is an example of a video that is not managed through MDM, uh, but does have the MAM policies applied to it. Uh, so we can see that we can take a look at the changes that that uh, type of example uh, looks like. So again, we start off with an iOS device, and just to make sure, we'll double check the device is in fact not MDM managed. And as an end user, we'll go ahead and download one of the Office 365 applications and, and log in to our corporate account. Again, we'll delegate the authentication to Workspace ONE. Uh, so we'll go through the normal authentication through our, with our domain credentials. Again, simply using our, our local AD credentials to log into Office 365. And once the authentication is completed, uh, we can go ahead and actually access all of the resources that are assigned to the end user um, through the OneDrive application. And as you can see, even though the uh, the policies, uh, we implemented the policies, our policies have been implemented through Azure MAM po um, policies, have been applied to the specific Azure AD account. Um, but even though those policies have been applied to that account itself, uh, because we don't have MDM in place in this case, we can still do the transfer of the document itself, and we would still be able to copy that app that document to an outside application. Uh, so th this goes to show that uh, though the policies allows us to set a, a set of restrictions to reduce some of the policies that are not available in MDM, uh, those policies by itself, in many cases, will not be enough. Uh, so in many cases, we'll see later on the presentation, it is advised to have a combination of both MDM as well as as specific policies in order to have a complete, uh, a completely secure Office 365 environment. So the finally security principle that we'll take, be taking a look at is identity. And so one of the things that we've been seeing in, um, throughout some of the demos and, and, uh, before and identity simply allows us to verify that the end user that is accessing those resources is who, who they say it is. Um, so making sure that that, that, that uh, end user is, is a user from, from within the company or an end user that has been given access from someone within the company, um, that they're able to supply the, the right set of credentials and, and based on the, the condition of the device that they're accessing from, uh, whether it be from, from the network that's being accessed from, uh, type of device and the temp type of day, uh, that they meet all of the different criteria that's been set up by the administrator and, and have a secure way to access the, the resources before they're being downloaded to the device itself. 
So now that we've taken a look at all, at all three different security principles, we can see how those principles applied when we start to like, take out some of the most common scenarios that we've seen uh, within some of the cost of our customers that have adopted Office 365. So in order to explore the different use cases, uh, we'll use Steve here as an example. So Steve is a very uh, normal scenario that we see across different companies. Uh, so Steve is a re regional sales manager. Uh, someone that needs access to a lot of different documents on the go, uh, that wants to be able to access resources within, within Office 365 across many type of devices uh, throughout most of the most of the day, whether it be whether he's on the in the office or in the move. And, and Steve, somebody that's been issued a Windows 10 device laptop, an Android corporate device. Uh, he does have an iPad at home that he uses and shares with his family. Um, and he also has all the devices outside of his home and his office that he sometimes uses to access Office 365 resources. So we'll take a look at how those different scenarios can be catered to uh, from an IT perspective. The first scenario we're going to take a look at is Steve's work Android phone. So we'll then move ahead and, and take a look at Steve's personal iPad. Again, Steve's personal iPad is a device that he keeps at home shares with his family, does have personal personal information as well as some confidential information that he's downloaded through the native Office 365 applications. Um, thirdly, we have Steve's Windows 10 work laptop. So this is something that's been issued uh, through through their, his company. And it is a device that has been, been co-managed through SCCM as well as the Workspace ONE platform. And finally, we'll take a look at a, 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 a sample Chromebook device. Uh, so this is what we usually call a grand, grandma scenario, or the device that that, you, that Steve won't heavily use, uh, but use from time to time in order to access those um, those resources. And, and it's a device that he does not necessarily have full control over. So again, the first device we'll take a look at is Steve's Android phone device. So Steve's objective is really to be able to access all the resources that he needs for his day-to-day -day, uh, work. Uh, he wants to be able to self-service self access to all the corporate applications, to be able to provision all the applications that he needs from Office 365 and outside of Office 365 as well onto his device, and make sure that Microsoft Outlook is functional as his preferred email, um, email access client. Now, from the IT perspective, uh, there's several scenarios that need to be uh, in, be met in order to allow Steve to access resources from within the device itself. Um, so make sure that we enable Workspace ONE on his phone, both both as a catalog uh, as a catalog to mean to access those applications, and as an MDM solution to enforce policies within the device. We need to provide access to Microsoft Outlook as the preferred email client, as it is the client that we want to enforce the policies onto and be able to leverage Android Enterprise Security as much as possible within the device in order to enforce the policies and to separate uh, personal and work data. And that comes hand in hand with preventing any data leakage into personal applications. So the video will be taking a look at, um, it's an example of how Steve can um, take a hold of his Android, uh, corporate issued Android device in order to gain access to those corporate resources. So we can see here we have an Android device. Uh, so first thing Steve will do is to download the, the Workspace ONE application from the App Store. And he can go ahead and sign in with his corporate credentials. So be redirected to the uh, Workspace ONE login page and just simply be asked for its uh, corporate domain credentials. Once we verify the credentials uh, from Steve, uh, we can go ahead and provision the Android Enterprise, um, Android, Android Enterprise to his device. Uh, so just go ahead with, by auto automatically setting up the works Android workspace within the device and provisioning all of the applications that have been assigned to Steve uh, to his device as well. So as you'll see pretty quickly, once the once the enrollment process from the device and the creation of the workspace one. Um, where of, of the Android Enterprise workspace has concluded, uh, we, we can see that we will be presented with the workspace one set of applications. Uh, so from this point on, Steve can go ahead and download any of the, any of the corporate applications that he might need. 
Um, so once we completed the uh, the download, we can go ahead and uh, open Outlook. We'll enter in our Office 365 account. And from that point on, we'll be uh, transmitted over to VIDM or, or Workspace ONE Identity as the, uh, the main authentication provider for our Office 365 tenant. Since it is an MDM managed device, we can see that the authentication into Office 365 happens seamlessly um, in the background. So there's no need for Steve to enter any additional credentials since we already have credentials that have been installed within the device. From that point on, we can go ahead and access any of the um, any the same document that we've uh, accessed before. Now, as we do have complete control of, of the device, of, of the, the corporate part of the device and the applications itself, we can see that we applied all the necessary uh, policies to, to that account. Uh, so there's no downloading of, of the uh, corporate documents locally, and there's no copying of the corporate doc documents to any personal accounts. Um, so Android Enterprise Office Applications won't allow us to install or add any personal accounts to the OneDrive applications. Now, one of the WMM policies that we've configured within the Office 365 applications, uh, just to add a second layer of security, is to enforce the Steve will need to add a security pin and be able to enforce a security pin every time he tries to access any of the native Office 365 applications. Now we'll take a look at where we can configure some of the different policies that we've applied to that specific device. So if we take a look at the Workspace ONE console, uh, we can see all the different Workspace uh, Microsoft now, Office 365 applications that's been assigned to Steve's corporate device. Uh, so anything from Excel, OneDrive, and Outlook are all the applications that are being provisioned and automatically downloaded to Steve's device after he's completed the enrollment process. From the authentication standpoint, if we take a look at the VMware Identity Manager, uh, we can take a look at that we're using something that we refer to as mobile SSO. So this is what allows us to automatically and seamlessly authenticate Steve from a managed device as well as block any um, access from any unmanaged devices for, to the same set of resources. Now, coming back to the Workspace ONE console, uh, we can take a look at where we configure the uh, Microsoft App Protection Policies. Uh, so these are the uh, specific man policies that allows us to prevent things such as copy-paste, um, screenshots, um, or any sharing of, of documents outside of the uh, uh, corporate applications. So again, looking at Steve's device, we can take a look. We can see that we've combined all three different security principles that we previously explored. Uh, so we fully configured uh, Workspace ONE as the MDM platform for, for that Android device. Uh, we've configured manned specific application policies to the Office 365 applications to prevent copying and, uh, and pasting of corporate information to other applications. And we've also utilized identity management to make sure that Steve is who he is it is he is to he is and and also to maintain a seamless authentication um, to the corporate resources uh, from a from an MDM managed device so the second device that we'll be taking a look at is Steve's personal iPad so Steve wants to make um, the Steve's objectives are mainly to be able to get access to uh, to OneDrive and, and be able to access his office 365 account from a personal downloaded application and he still also wants to get access to the same set of document that he's previously accessed on his corporate uh, devices. Now, from IT standpoint, um, we, uh, as an IT administrator, you would also want to enable Steve to gain access to that application. Uh, but you want to make sure that the authentication, since it is not coming from a managed device, that the level of authentication is stepped up. Uh, so not only access for domain credentials, but we want to, might want to step that up to using a multi-factor authentication approach uh, it is also very important the, the type of enforcement of DLP policies that we enforce into those um, those applications are, are very strict. Uh, so any any documents that are being downloaded and, and looked at within the application itself, um, making sure that none of that is being shared out uh, outside of the corporate applications. And that goes in hand with preventing any data leakage to personal apps or transmitted into uh, per, uh, personal uh, mail accounts. So we'll take a look at a, a demo that shows us Steve's personal iPad. And we can take a look at how, how the uh, MEM policies and identity management can be used to uh, satisfy that, those requirements. 
So again, we, we can take a look and we can see that we have a, a different set of applications. Um, so all of the application that Steve would use on a day-to-day -day basis outside of work. Uh, so we can take a look at it, it is a device that's not being managed through a West Space One MDM, but we still have some of the Office 365 native applications Steve would like to gain access to. Now, in this case, Steve will go through the same login process that we previously did using his Office 365 account. Now, because it is an, an, not a fully MDM account, we'll firstly prompt Steve to enter his uh, uh, domain credentials, same ones as he previously used. But again, because it is not a fully MDM uh, managed device, uh, we'll go ahead and recognize it through VMware Identity Manager, and we are, uh, go ahead and request a second factor authentication. So one of three managed devices will actually receive an, a, a, an MFA authentication request through a VMware Verify MFA solution. When he, once he approves that authentication request, then he can go ahead and continue and, and finalize the authentication process through his uh, personal iPad. So again, once we finalize the the creation of the account within OneDrive, we can we can see that we get in a prompt from Office 365 that we need to restart the application in order to enforce the, the man policies that being applied to that application itself. Uh, so in this case, even though it is not a managed device, we've applied all the necessary policies to make sure that there's no information that's being shared outside of the personal uh, corporate applications onto the personal space of this device. Uh, so we can take a look at some of the, the same financial statements that we previously take, took a look at. But if we try to open it in the personal uh, application, we can see that there's no options outside of the application, uh, managed applications that are already uh, assigned on the device. The same thing goes to if we try to add any personal accounts, um, we can take a look at that, that only corporate accounts will be available to be added uh, within this corporate application. Finally, if we open the document and we try to do a copy paste, uh, we can see that if, if we attempt to do copy paste outside of the uh, um, Office 365 applications um, onto the same example that we used before in Evernote, uh, we can take a look at the man policies will apply in this scenario as well, and it will restrict us to copying any, any of the uh, corporate information into our personal applications. So again, even though we do, don't have a MD, fully MDM managed device, uh, we're still given access, uh, Steve, the access that he needs in order to view the important information that he needs on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, but we're making sure that we're securing, not the device as a whole, but we're securing the information that is being downloaded uh, into those corporate applications. Um, and we're doing that by applying the, the appropriate DLP policies as well as a pin code, pin code enforcement or um, biometric enforcement in order to access the application itself. So if we take a look at the Ember Identity Manager, uh, we can take a look at the policies that are being created in this case. Uh, so we can create a, a policy that's specific for iOS devices. Now in this case, we can prompt, um, firstly for mobile iOS devices, which will prompt manage devices for seamless authentication. But since it is not a managed device, uh, we can fall back to simply uh, asking for domain credentials, so these, as we can see in the password um, example. And since we are using a pass only a password uh, prompt, uh, we can go ahead and step that up to an MFA solution, which is our uh, VMware Verify uh, solution. Now, from the Workspace ONE console, uh, we can take a look at the different, again, the different Intune man policies that, are, that we're applying in this case. Uh, so again, the policies that are applied to the Workspace ONE console, but are being enforced to, uh, through the Intune um, man policy engine. So in this case, we want to restrict any transfer from uh, corporate applications outside to personal applications, and again, restrict any form of uh, copy-paste from corporate uh, applications to personal information as well. And finally, uh, through the same set of uh, policies, um, it is the same when we applied a, a PIN. So anytime Steve wants to access that application on his personal device, we'll have to enter the same set of PIN 
or, or use his fingerprint as a biometric authentication method. So again, to take a look at, to reiterate what we're taking a look at in Steve's personal device. Uh, again, in this case, it is not a corporate issue device and it is not a device that's being associated with uh, Workspace ONE MDM. So there's no MDM policies that are being enforced on the device itself. Um, but it's still a device that Steve's can use to gain access to all the corporate information that he needs uh, to carry out his uh, work at home. Um, so in order as an administrator to gain, give that access with appropriate uh, security levels, we want to make sure that we control the application with the appropriate set of DLP policies and, and pin control, as well as, as well as successfully or appropriately authenticate Steve uh, by using the right set of security prompts, uh, be it a domain credentials, MFA prompts, um, or whatever it might be necessary to, to escalate in that case. Now, the third device that we'll be taking a look at is, is a corporate device that's been issued, a uh, Windows 10 corporate device that's been issued to Steve. Um, so one of the things that everybody expects from uh, Windows devices at this point is to be able to have a device that's issued and fully imaged from, from, the, from the company and be given seamless access to all of the different um, corporate applications. And that is something that we can satisfy through the worst, uh, worst piece one platform. So the IT requirements is, is to be able to standardize in the policies that are being set within the device itself. Uh, make sure that any app, any information that's being downloaded to the app, app device itself has been locally encrypted. Uh, make sure that we maintain a strong set of authentication when accessing any type of uh, SAS corporate resources and making sure that any application that, that is locally um, downloaded to the device cannot be shared uh, outside of the corporate realm to any personal applications or, co or personal applications. So in the next video, we'll take a look at an example for Steve's uh, Windows 10 corporate issued device. Um, so again, this is a device that has been co-managed through SCCM as well as Workspace ONE platform. So, if we take a look at the device itself, uh, we can make sure the device is in fact being managed through Workspace ONE MDM. Um, it is it is being uh, joined to the MDM MDM AirWatch MDM solution, and still we have access to the same Workspace ONE catalog that he has access to in his other devices. Uh, so the same set of SaaS application as well as some Windows 10 specific application that is, that are being provisioned to his device. Uh, so we can see Google Chrome as a native Google Chrome Windows 10 application, as well as the Office 365 native clients that are being automatically provisioned to his device. As well as we can see that we've automatically provisioned a set of credentials in the form of um, X509 certificate that is being automatically uh, downloaded to his device. Now, as we can see in the bottom right corner, uh, we've automatically uh, also enabled the encryption of his device. The bit local encryption has been triggered on his Windows 10 corporate device. So now that the enrollment is complete, uh, Steve can go ahead and access his email account through the Outlook native client. So again, similarly, uh, as he's done through his other devices, we'll enter Office 365 account. And since we do have that certificate that has been installed through MDM solution, it will automatically be logged in or, or authenticated through the VMware Identity Manager and be logged into Office 365. Now, once he's completed the login process to Office 365, who will have access to all his corporate email. Um, we'll finish the sync of the corporate email to uh, corporate down, um, local sync of the corporate email account to his corporate device. And then we'll see how he can get access to all, all, all these email messages. Now we'll take a look at the same attachment that we've taken a look at in, in the previous devices. Um, in this case, we can take a look at this that this email message is being sent from within the corporate realm, um, from, from within the corporate domain, does contain uh, an attachment that is being set as confidential. So even though Steve has been uh, is trying to download a local copy of this attachment to his computer, uh, we can see that, that we maintain the classification of that attachment as, as a confidential attachment itself. Uh, so we're, we're, we're setting, we're configuring a set of policies that will identify that specific attachment that's been sent from within uh, a corporate account to, to a shared corporate account. And even though we're downloading a copy of that attachment itself, we maintain a classification that will enforce corporate policies to that specific attachment, attachment itself. So as we see at the top, we'll see the sensitivity for the specific messages as confidential and will only be given access to only employees within the company. 
So now Steve will try to forward that same attachment to his personal email. Um, and because that specific attachment has a classification of only being given access to employees within the company and no outside access, uh, we can take a look at what happens with when Steve try to access that, that same document for his personal account. So he will receive a notification that, that, the, that the attachment is available for him to access. But once he tries to access the attachment itself from his personal account, um, he'll see that because the classification of that attachment itself, uh, he won't be given, he won't be able to access it unless it goes back to his corporate account. Now, because because the uh, classif now in this case, Steve does has the ability to change the classification on the spot of the attachment itself. So, if he does want to make sure, if he does wants to share that attachment uh, to his personal account, he'll have the ability to do so. However, now IT administrator does have an audit trail, and and Steve will need to provide a specific reason as to why the classification of that specific specific attachment is being changed at that moment. So now, if we try to upload one of the corporate, uh, local copies that we downloaded of those um, of those attachments, uh, we can see that because OneDrive is not is not been deemed as a corporate, it's not been recognized as a corporate application. Uh, as we saw in the video, we can see that 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 upload of that corporate attachment to the uh, non personal OneDrive uh, Dropbox account has been blocked. So if you go back to the Workspace ONE console, we can take a look at the different policies that have been applied to the device. As we saw, we've automatically configured BitLock encryption. So any information, any documents that are being downloaded to the device are uh, locally um, encrypted. We've, we've also pushed down a, a custom payload that allows for the automatically download and installation of the Office 365 set of uh, native applications. And, and we've also created an authentication policy within VMware Identity Manager, which allows us to automatically authenticate Steve into the native Windows 10 um, Office 365 applications, as we saw with um, Microsoft Outlook. And finally, with regards to the classification of the document itself, uh, you can see we can also create a, a policy that enforces and, and sets the classification of the different document types and allows us to enforce that those documents that are being included within the uh, set of protected or, or classified uh, documents that are being downloaded to, to the machine. Now, again, similarly to similar to uh, Intune and MAM policies, um, the Azure the, the classification and enforcement of that classification, even though it is being configured through the Workspace One um, platform, it, it is something that is being enforced and 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 ultimately being enforced through the Azure platform itself. And that is through the Azure Information Protection Service. And I won't go too much into how that works in this specific application, but it's just to know that the actual enforcement and, and functionality of, of that enforcement itself has been it's happening in, in the background through the Azure Information po uh, Protection Policies. The same way we can take a look at uh, the same, the policies that are being created from the Workspace ONE platform are being re reflected automatically and created, created within the Azure console itself. Uh, so the same, same policies that are being created are, are being reflected in terms of the classifications uh, that are being enforced, enforced when, the, the, uh, when the documents are being downloaded to the device. So finally, the last example, oh. So as, as to reiterate, the, the third example that we've taken a look at is Steve's work laptop. Uh, so in this case, we've taken a look at, at, at we've made use of three main of the security access uh, security policies. The first one being the device management as Workspace ONE MDM to secure and provision uh, the applications to the device. And we've used identity management to authenticate Steve uh, to his Outlook um, email account. And finally, we made use of Azure Inf Information Protection 
to protect the attachments that are being downloaded to the device and prevent those attachments from being shared outside of the corporate realm. So finally, the last device that we'll take a look at is Grandma's laptop. Uh, so as we mentioned before, Grandma's laptop in this case will be a Chromebook. Uh, so it's a lightweight device that only has access to web applications. And this is perfect since Office 365 can function as, an, as a web-only application. So in this case, Steve uh, wants to gain access to the same set of resources that he has in his other type of devices and same set of documents that he has been given access to before. But he wants to do, do, do so from this device that he does has, has no ownership from and is being accessed from, uh, from a device that he don't, does not regularly use. Uh, so we don't necessarily know the state of the device. We don't necessarily know if it, has any, it contains any malware or not. Uh, we, so we want to make sure that Steve has as light access as possible uh, by being able to read uh, and maybe modify the uh, the uh, documents online, but not be able to locally download any of the uh, any of the documents since we don't have no visibility of the uh, the posture and, and functionality of the device itself. So in the last this last video, we'll take a look at how this looks uh, from Steve's. Um, unmanaged Chromebook device. So in this case, from the Chromebook device, we can navigate to the Office 365 uh, web portal. And again, log in with our Office 365 account. Um, once again, we'll be redirected to our VMware Identity Manager login portal and be prompted to log in with the same set of credentials. And similarly to what we've done before with an unmanaged device, we can go ahead and step up the authentication uh, to make sure that we have an appropriate um, set of authentication to make sure that Steve is who, who he says he is. Uh, we'll do the same authentication prompt through one of our uh, corporate managed devices. And once the authentication prompt has been approved, uh, we can go back then and finalize the authentication process through a VMware Identity Manager. Now, once Steve has been successfully logged into Office 365, he'll begin ac given access to view the same set of um, the same set of documents he previously did. Uh, so we see the same set of uh, financial statements as we've previously accessed. In this case, we'll be accessing uh, a Word document as an example. So as we can see, Steve has full access to view this document since online and modify them through the uh, uh, web. Uh, web application, web office, office 365 applications, uh, but we'll be given no access to really download and, and uh, modify those applications uh, locally. So as you can see in this case, if he tries to download the documents locally, we'll actually be blocking access. Um, he'll be, and he'll only be downloading a, a blank PDF. So we can take a look at some of the policies that we've created in order to make that happen. So the first thing still is. Similar to us, what we've done before is with VMware Identity Manager, uh, we can create a set of policies that allows us to successfully authenticate Steve from an unmanaged device, again, using a combination of domain credentials as well as a MFA solution that is built into the Workspace ONE platform. So one of the methods that we're, one of the uh, solutions that are being used in this case um, in order to protect the download and prevent the download of, of corporate information to an unmanaged device is the use of a cloud access security broker or CASB as it is commonly in use. And what a CASB allows us to do is to protect um, the download of those documents, maintain a classification or corporate documents and tagging them uh, similarly to what was done with Steve's Windows 10 corporate device. Uh, so in this case, CASB allows us to identify uh, information that's being accessed for an unmanaged device and classify which documents are, are, are to be given access to be downloaded to those specific platforms and which documents can only be downloaded to a fully corporate managed uh, devices. Now, in this case, we can take a look at some of the uh, policies that we've created for, for this specific uh, CASB solution. Now, it's important to know that it, even though this CASB solution is something that exists outside of the Workspace ONE platform, it is something that is fully integrated to work with Workspace ONE. Uh, so in this case, we can create a, a, a policy that states that if, if an authentication into Office 365 is happening from an unmanaged device uh, that is not being recognized as being managed by Workspace ONE, uh, then go ahead and block any, 
any download of or corporate documents into the into the local storage of the uh, unmanaged device. And we can see that we can create very uh, granular policies. Again, if it says any any format that that uh, corresponds to Office uh, Office format from an honest managed device, uh, simply prevent the download of those documents locally. So finally, to radiate the last use case that we took a look at uh, as Grandma's laptop, uh, we can we, we saw that we since it is a lightweight device that has no um, NDM enforcement. In this case, now we've not made use of any device management, and so if we not since we're not dealing with native uh, local applications, we've also not make, made use of any uh, applica application specific management. So in this case, we've only made use of two two different security principles, that being of the identity manager, uh, the identity management to make sure that we've successfully authenticated Steve into the uh, device, and as well as the uh, cloud access security broker to make sure that we're preventing. Uh, any download and, and any any leakage of corporate information outside of what Steve is just simply viewing um, from from the uh, web Office 365 client. So just to reiterate, the, the four different use cases that we saw again, we saw Steve's work Android phone, which is a fully MDM managed phone, and uh, we, we can be fully protected both from MDM MDM policies as well as uh, MAM specific policies. As well as, as well as making sure the identity that Steve is fully authenticated using VMware Identity Manager. Uh, secondly, we took a look at Steve's personal device, which is a device that's not necessarily MDM managed, uh, but in which and it's a device in which we're able to control the leakage of, of corporate data uh, through man specific applic uh, application policies. So Steve can still have, have access to to his corporate information and download uh, download those documents to the native Office 365 applications. Uh, without suffering the risk of, of uh, leaking those those uh, documents out to personal accounts, we also took a look at uh, Steve's Windows 10 work laptop, which is a common use case of a Windows 10 laptop that's being issued uh, from from his company. Uh, Steve uh, has has full access to all the Office 365 native native clients, and he's able to download all of the corporate information to the laptop itself, which is being kept uh, fully encrypted. But the classification uh, classification of the documents that are being downloaded does not allow Steve to share any of those documents to any personal accounts or or share those uh, to any personal applications. And finally, we've recently taken a look at the Grandma's laptop, and Grandma's laptop again is a light, uh, lightweight device that may not have MDM capabilities and may not be make use of any native Office 365 application with MAP policies and only relies on uh, web clients to uh, view and edit those uh, office, uh, office documents. So in this case, we'll make use of the uh, cloud access broker uh, to enforce and make sure that not, none of the documents are being downloaded and leaked outside of the corporate realm. So the bottom line is that in order to successfully protect Office endpoints from accessing Office 365 applica applications. Uh, we can make use of Workspace ONE as the main encompassing solution, um, but it also needs to rely on a couple different solutions to make sure that all the different use cases you might have within your company are being successfully met. Uh, so that, that does include a couple of different combinations. There would be the use into MAM controls, uh, a third-party cloud access security broker, or even the use of Azure Information uh, Protection to make sure that all the, all the data that is being handled from Office 365 is being um, completely secured, uh, both locally and, and in the web instances. Thanks, Camillo. An awful lot of uh, great information there. So thank you, everybody, for, uh, for, for sticking with us. I know there's a, a lot of detail. Um, so if you want some more information on how we are able to um, provide this kind of access into, into uh, 0365, uh, we will be sending a, or you, you will be able to use the, the, the link that you use today 
to access an on-demand version of this. Uh, but there are also some other resources that you can uh, utilize to get some more information. Uh, there is actually a recording of um, the session that Camilo did at VMworld available on the, uh, the, the, the VMworld replay site. So there's a, there's a ton of great content there. So I, I certainly recommend that if you, if you haven't taken a look at that, that you, you go take a look and see, uh, see some of the content there, such as the, the two extra, um, pieces that I wanted to highlight, the Workspace One technical deep dive and the learn what's new with Workspace One, um, session. There are also hands on labs that can get you started uh, with Workspace ONE. So they'll provide a complete environment for you uh, to be able to get going so you don't need to find uh, hardware or, or software. Uh, and that works you through how to install and configure and uh, the, uh, the advanced sessions. Uh, and then more content, of course, on vmware.com forward slash products forward slash Workspace ONE uh, and also on the tech zone dot vmware dot com. So once again, thank you very, very much for uh, attending today uh, and uh, uh, have a, please enjoy the, the, the rest of your day. Thanks very much.